Hey everyone, you have to watch this episode. We're giving away two double passes to the Monashi Music Festival. Keep Ooh. watching to find out how you can win. I watch Hello Okanagan from Sycamus. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hello Okanagan. And guess where we are? The houseboat capital of Canada. But there's a lot more to Sycamus. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please make sure you do so. It really helps us out a lot. And smash that like button if you like this episode on Sycamus. Hi guys, welcome to Sycamus Houseboats. Hey Barb, how's it going? Awesome. Thank you for allowing us to have one of your houseboats as we uh, check out Sycamus as well. Oh, can't do it any other way. <laughs> so you want to show us around? Let our viewers know what a houseboat's all about. This is one of my favorite boat classes. This is a uh, Genesis 70. Here inside the main salon is a lovely sitting area with a fireplace, full galley. You can cook a turkey dinner in there for two friends. So this is... Obviously a sofa that turns into a bed, I'm assuming? Yeah, and the dinette also drops down into a place to sleep. Generally speaking, if you want a more luxurious trip, you just use the cabins and not this space and keep of this course. for friends and family to have a good time in. We got a microwave, a stove. Holy crap, Dave, there's a dishwasher. You don't even have to get your hands dirty. Look at this. This is a very special boat. Not every boat has a dishwasher, but our bigger classes do, and then a, a full-size fridge as well. So basically, it's like camping. You gotta bring your own bedding, your own towels, your own pillow, but everything else is here. We're like a giant floating RV. Yes. Awesome. With a hot tub and a water slide and guaranteed waterfront with every stay. So these rooms here change into king beds. Um, by just folding down the uh, mattresses and then every one of these cabins have their own bathrooms or heads as we call them in the boating world. So anyways, this room that is uh, special, the reason the bed is so high is there's actually another bed tucked underneath, oh. which is great for young people and families to stay in and, uh, and enjoy. So I like to put my dog, my kids, and people I don't like in this space. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for the young at heart. And uh, you know, these boats get a lot of more affordable with the more people you put on it. So. And then out that way is obviously where the fun parts are. Outside here is where the water slide is. You can go fishing back here. You can fish off the back of the boat. All the boats have uh, fish finders on them. Um, you can swim off the back deck. You can go off the water slide yeah. and uh, really, you know, go crazy. And this deck is usually filled with like paddle boards and kayaks and inflatables. So you can have yeah. that amazing vacation. I have a feeling we're gonna have lots of fun on this thing. Oh yeah. And then the party room is upstairs? Oh yeah. Let's go check it out. And this boat class, I think shows off house boating summer days the best. It's got a sound system, it has a full bar, you've got your hot tub, and the captain can drive from the front so he's still part of the party. Um, and it really is the optimal experience. You can make your drinks and suntan and just do everything you love in the lake. And something I want to tell our viewers is I've been houseboating many times because my family's involved in the industry as well. And even if it's a little bit rainy, like it's still an amazing trip because I mean you're either inside the cabin, there's a million things to do there. You can play cards, board games, video games. If yep. you bring your video controller, you can plug it right in. I mean, even being here and chilling, having a drink, you're sitting with your chairs that you bring from home or whatever. And obviously one of the best things to do in the rain is being in a hot tub. Like I don't mind when it's raining and being in the hot tub. So what's the largest capacity of accommodations that you guys have? 24. 24 people on a houseboat. Yes, that's 24 people that like each other a whole lot though. Okay. That's two people in every bed, two people in the dinette, two people in the float cabin. So one thing I'm sure our viewers don't understand and I didn't in the beginning is it's not really that expensive. If you go with a group of people and you're sharing it, it almost comes down to what you would normally pay for a hotel room per person. 
Absolutely. And Help. instead of just getting four walls yeah. and a small little hotel room, what are you getting? Yeah, you, well, we're the uh, entertainment, we're the accommodations, and we're your transportation. So it really is a cost savings. And a few families get together, and it costs a lot less than a hotel in a resort area. And you guys do other rentals apart from houseboats here as well, I understand? Yep, we supply all the toys. We have paddle boards, kayaks, canoes. We have uh, jet skis and ski boats and all the toys to go with it. Get onto the website right now. What is the website for information? Sycamusehouseboats.com. Sycamusehouseboats.com. And listen, don't freak out. David and I can ride and drive this thing. They actually send you a video on how to maintain it, how to drive it. They actually are so cool by bringing in one of the representatives on the boat and they teach you everything. So you'll know so much before you leave. It ends up being really easy. It's not challenging. And guys, it's gonna be one of those things that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. So check out the website right now for more information and follow us as you watch our journey. We're here with the mayor, Terry. Terry, thanks for being on our show. Ah, oh, you're welcome. I want to know you personally, what are your favorite things to do when you're not being a mayor? Houseboating is one of my favorites and also fishing on the lake. I just love fishing on the lake. It's really, it's really, really good fishing here, especially this time of the year. It's excellent, yeah. Are you going to tell our viewers your favorite hole? Or is it a secret? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's looking like a true fisherman. Okay, you know what? <laughs> with a name like Sycamoose, there's got to be a story there. Yeah, what okay, well, in the Sepwekmik language, okay, First Nations language, Sikamoose means sick mouse, okay? Sick mouse means the middle, okay, the center, okay? And when you take a look at, here we are on four different arms of Shushwap Lake, okay, we're right in the middle. And so that's why they named it that way, sick mouse, Sikamoose, okay? So it is means the middle. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a lot of famous hockey players that came from the Okanagan. Would you like to tell our viewers yeah, a little bit? No, One of them is... Yeah, no, we've got Shea Weber and... Uh, there, actually, there's a story behind Sycamus. It's now 16 professional hockey players have come out of here from originally. From such a small town. From a, such a small town. It's absolutely unique, okay? So what are they... Cody, uh, uh, Cody France and Shea Weber. I mean, Shea Weber's, you know... What are they putting in the fish here? What are they putting in the water, you mean? What's in the water? I think two you know, of the oldest players that ever started here was uh, somebody you know well that oh I yeah, know well, Rob and Yeah, Ron, Ron and Rob Flockhart. Flockhart. <laughs> like, I mean, absolutely fantastic people. They've been very instrumental in seeing hockey grow here. I mean, we were here, we did an episode over a year ago, snowmobiling. Yeah. How big has that gotten now? Oh, it's, it's really expanded. You know, uh, 10 years ago when I first got on council, we were experiencing around 5,000 sleds a year into Sycamus. And now in the winter time, and now that we've got our trails really renowned, um, uh, we have over 22,000 people visit this community every year with their sleds and they come from all over the place. And in the summertime now, you were talking about fishing, what else? I mean, I know there's music festivals here. 
Yeah, so uh, on July the 16th, we're having Son of Stomp. That's a music festival that for that weekend. Uh, the weekend after that, uh, we have the Monashi Music Festival. So uh, that's on the 23rd of July. Uh, but during the summer, we also have music in the park. Our, uh, our uh, Chamber of Commerce organizes that. There's so much going on. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Anytime you want to do an interview with me, I'd be more than happy to do it. Whenever you're driving through Sycamus, there's this one place that's real popular. I mean, there's many, but there's one place if you want to cool off in the hot, hot summer to get some ice cream. It's called D Dutchman Dairy. But there are a lot more than just ice cream. So we're here in Madison, who's the granddaughter of the people that started this? Yes, I am. Yeah. So tell us the history. When did your grandparents open this up? Um, D Dutchman Dairy opened in 1978, and now my dad runs it, as well as other parts of the family. Oh wow. Yeah. So there's ice cream, there's cheese. Yes. What else do you guys have? Uh, there's also butter um, and milk, all different types as well as chocolate milk. And is everything made here on site? Yes, it is. It is? Yeah. And from your own cows, I'm assuming? Yes, from our cows here and then my cousin owns a farm as well. And, and we also, also have goats and peacocks, pheasants. Okay, well maybe we should go take a tour and check out these other animals. Sounds Follow good. Follow us. Hey everyone, make sure you check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Hello Okanagan. Thank you. <laughs> That's how it feels to take all the words. Hey everyone, guess where we are? We're in the channel between Mara Lake and Shushwap Lake. You have to go through here to get to one or the other in Sycamus. And there's a bunch of great places to see here. One of them is Moose Mulligan's Restaurant. My other favorite place is Red's, which is a place you can rent a bunch of toys for the water. We got Mike here, the owner. Mike, yeah. thanks for bringing us on board yeah, here. Yeah, thanks for coming guys. Um, so when did, when did you start with Red's? And uh, why, did, why did you name it Reds? <laughs> you know, I'm not, not too sure why, but it, you know, it just ca came to me one day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I started almost 12 years ago now. Wow. Uh, yeah, and I kind of started with one boat and four sea and now I got a fleet. Uh, we're getting everybody on the water, whether it be by paddleboard, canoes, kayaks. Uh, we also have up to the big double decker pontoon boats, hold up to 25 people. Jeez. Uh, sport boats, sea doos, you name it. If you want to go out in the water, we can take you out there, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. And you yeah. got a gas bar here too. Is that for just for your stuff or is that for everyone? To no, pull anybody up? can pull up. We got full service. We have people down here to catch you. We got nice trash pads on the end to keep your boat safe. Yeah. yeah. And that floating store you're talking about is called? The Sea Store. The sea so store. yeah, we have Shark a, Shack. We have the Shark Shack. We got a floating pub in the middle of the lake. The only way you can get to it is by boat. Um, we have the floating store. If you're stuck up there, you need gas, ice, groceries. They can take care of you in the middle of the lake. Um, if you're coming houseboating out here, um, yeah, they got all your kind of essentials out there. Uh, and then, yeah, the great thing is rent a sea do with your houseboat so you can always rip around there. The houseboats aren't the fastest things in the world. Yeah. So, you know, you want to get a little fun, play so, around, escape your big group of people. You can run away on one of those and get some. And how many arms are there in, sh in the Shushwap? So there's four main arms, yeah. Okay. So the lake's like a big H. Yeah, okay. and then the crosshairs of the H is where all the floating store is, the floating pub is. Um, that's where you can go hang out. Uh, but yeah, there's four arms. Some are more developed than other. Anstey Arms, a nice quiet one. Yeah. Um, Seymour Arms, nice quiet down at the end too. Lots of sandy beaches down there. And then there's a famous one called Nielsen Beach. Nielsen Beach, yeah. So Maybe we want to tell our viewers why it's famous. <laughs> Actually, I think it was in GQ once years ago as one of the top party beaches in North America. They made something. the top 10 in Maxim Magazine That's as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. places to party. My first visit to Sycamus, because this is where my wife is from, we went for a drive and we went down Nielsen Beach to check it out. And it's literally houseboat, 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 houseboat. 110 or 11 houseboats yeah. I counted 
and every fifth or sixth houseboat had its own DJ. And it's just like, it's the biggest nightclub in the area. It's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, and everybody gets to bring all their own stuff. It's awesome, yeah, it's a blast. And what's behind us, as you guys can hear, there's train tracks, there's a train bridge, which opens and closes for the houseboats. And obviously we got the famous bridge here at Trans Canada. You guys want to jump out of Sea-Doo, go check out the lake a little bit? Let's do it. Let's hey, do awesome. it. Let's see you up. You know we love tasting things, especially when it comes to drinks. So we're here at the only distillery in Sycamus, After Dark Distillery with the owner, Dean. Dean, thanks for allowing us to come in here. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. So when did you start this? How'd you come up with the name? Uh, we started it about five and a half, six years ago, and we just came up with the name with a bunch of us sitting around one day. Having a few moonshine? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this building itself used to be a bowling alley? An old bowling alley. They built it in 1971. Wow, mm -hmm. cool. So tell us a little bit about the products you have. Like how many different products do you make? So we have a big line of different moonshines. Like flavored moonshines? Yeah, flavored moonshines. They go from root beer to apple pie to lemonade to maple to ginger and honey. To I've had the apple pie, David, and you gotta sample it. Like you're gonna love it. It is so good. I mean, I'm not trying to twist your arm, but can we do a little oh, tasting? Yeah, you sure. bet you we can. Let's taste. That's so that good. Throat, no. Is this the only place you can buy this stuff or can you buy it in liquor stores and stuff? Well, we have it in uh, private liquor stores. If you guys are interested in getting your hands on some of this After Dark Distillery, get onto their website and more importantly, ask your local liquor store, especially some of the private ones. I know you guys here in the Okanagan are carrying it. Hey guys, if you're ever in Sycamus, make sure you come down to Main Street. There used to be an old bowling alley, now it's called After Dark Distillery. Dean said that they'll do not only tastings, they'll take you on a tour in the back and show you where all the magic happens. If people want more information, what's the website they go to? You go to afterdarkdistilleries.com. Awesome. Hello Okanaganers, we're here with Brenda from Broon Crossing here in Sycamus. Brenda, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for coming, I'm really beautiful, happy you're here. Beautiful venue you've got behind here. And tell us a little bit about what you've got here, how long you've had it for, and, and what makes it special. I bought the lot in 2019, uh, and the vision I got for opening the market was a container market in downtown Calgary called East Village. Yes. It was a temporary market. I traveled down to Vegas to check out uh, their market in the downtown area and it was something that in, I was inspired to create a space where small business could thrive. So I'm not a farmer's market, I'm more into the small business. I want them to have an opportunity to show their wares, have a little bit of growth. We do a <laughs> Christmas market, it's called Tis the Season every okay. December and it's we invite all kinds of vendors again and we do hot chocolate. The barber sets up a nice little uh, path through the snow that the kids can play. It's like a like a corn maze, like a yeah. maze in the snow. Yeah. Uh, but it's lights. It's under the night at nighttime, and we do support some local charities um, through our efforts at Tis the Season. And then the other question I have is, there's a mural on the side of your wall. There is. Who did that? And what's? I mean, I know who it is, but I mean, okay. what's the reason for putting it there? Well, I wanted to put something on the wall that had interest that it was art because I'm trying to create this art culture and so originally it was going to be a 3D thing and then I thought no I need something that inspires conversation so right away I thought of Gord Downing because what better Canadian is there he inspired us inspired us all to do something and keep talking and reconcile the action so that was my 
take on that and I contracted a artist out of uh, Kelowna. So why is it called Broon Crossing? That's a great question. So when I looked at branding the lot and the market, I felt like it needed to have some historical significance to the community. And so I started doing research and I came, came across Rolf W. Brune, who the Trans-Canada Bridge is named after. He was here in the late 1800s. He was probably one of the first millionaires. He was a politician. He was an entrepreneur. So I thought Brune Crossing. Well, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> I really you. appreciate your visit. Well, thank you. Hey everyone, guess what? It's time to drink. We're in the Okanagan, you gotta try it out. There's some obviously tons of popular wines out here. There's some great beers, and I think we have one. And there's some amazing ciders that we've talked about a few and we needed to talk about a new kid in town. Shushwap Cider is visiting us here while we're in town. And this is Gina, one of the co-owners. So Gina, you're not even a year old yet? That's correct, uh, we opened one year ago on uh, June the 30th. June the, com the 30th. The company. Yep. The company. Yeah. The company is not a year old yet. Yeah. That's exactly Let's what I said. Would well, you think I talked about her? Well, I mean, the way you phrased it. <laughs> Come you on! Now. <laughs> She'd be too young to drink. <laughs> More for us, I guess. Anyway, so you're not even a year old, but you've been making waves. I've seen you guys everywhere. And now you're in pretty much most of the private liquor stores in the Okanagan. Have you branched out of the Okanagan? Yeah, we're down in Langley at um, a Brew Pub and a Tap Room. We are uh, out in the Kootenays in a couple places in Cranbrook and Kimberley. Um, yeah, down to Penticton, all the way through the Okanagan, Thompson region. Yeah. Wow, well I know the lightweight here doesn't want to ask, but why don't we start sampling? Then I can let David tell us what he thinks of each one here. <laughs> well, sounds good. Well, this is like, the lineup. There's five of them. This is the lineup is there a, here. Are they a specific order? Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually I'll, I'll switch these two around. So we're gonna go from drier to to sweeter. We've got local Peterson Orchard apples in here, and they are made up of uh, Spartan apples, Macintosh. I I don't think our cameraman oh. got this. No. What? But as you were pouring. Yeah my size of a drink? David's <laughs> eyes were bugging because he thought you were going to put a sample. Look at David's face. I thought this was a taster. What's going on? <laughs> he thought this was a tasting. I'm just pouring and talking. I would Sorry, this is nice and apple. crisp. It is, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's refreshing, which is what you want. Like, wow. Yeah, they're they're crisp, they're clear. We make them in the English tradition of cider making, which isn't sweet like a lot of uh, ciders up and down the, the region are more like a pop. These are actual, like, authentic ciders made from just fruit. So if you don't mind me asking, so you have five flavors? Uh, there's five here. We also have more on tap in the tap room, so we have lots of small batches, okay. and we do have a couple of um, smaller cans that are just for summer. So there's a lemon lavender, and we also have a hibiscus ginger. We tried lemon. So My wife and I think had that one. So which one is the most popular? I know they're all your kids, but there's yeah. gotta be a popular one. I mean, dry is classic. All your kids. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm putting you on the spot. Which one's your favorite? Um, I I love the Perry, but um, I also I love the Cherry Rosé in the summer. It's it's really popular with a lot of people. Uh, lavender Honey, it's another great one. Um, and the the two dry or the dry and the semi sweet are very classic apple ciders. So. so Gina, thank you very much for bringing your flavors out to us and trying the cider. Again, if people want to try this out for themselves, they can go to the lot, a lot of different um, liquor stores, private liquor stores in the Okanagan. They should visit you guys. The biggest question I have is they don't just have to buy a six pack of one flavor. Can they mix and match? At the cidery, we do have a four pack, which has our four core flavors. With so our, only the cider. Yeah, only at the cidery. Which gets the visitors but yes, there. Yes, that's right. So the rest of them, they are sold in, in four packs or singles throughout the Okanagan in the private liquor stores. So. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much. Hello Okanaganers, we're here with Andy from Monashi's Music Festival. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. So tell us about your festival. When did you start that here in Sycamus? So ideally we were going to start in 2020. Obviously <laughs> that got derailed. And yeah. yeah. So we're back for this summer, July 22nd, 23rd. And who do we expect to be there? We got 5440 headlining the Friday night and Daniel Wesley and uh, lots of great up and coming bands. We got uh, 16 bands in total, so it should be a lot of fun. Amazing, amazing. And yeah. this is a, is this the first year you're doing it or did you happen to be able to do it last year as well? 
This will be the inaugural year. Inaugural so, yeah. year, wow, that's amazing. We're really excited. We got Tyler Joe Miller and uh, Tegan Gaze from Kelowna. She's an up and comer. Lots of fantastic uh, bands on the Saturday as well. It's more country oriented on the Saturday night. And is there a beer garden, food trucks? Like what else are they going to expect there? Yeah, we're going to have uh, inflatables for the kids, face painting, body painting. We're going to have lots of food trucks and um, a mechanical bull. Wow. Yeah. So we're doing that at 1450 uh, Sycamore Soul Squaw Road. It's a dog park here in town. Oh, okay. So it's quite large. So if you're local, you know where the dog park is. If not, Exactly. You can probably get a map on your website or whatever. Yeah, everything's on the website. We just got camping set up, so it's that's yeah, going to be a great year. Like for trailers, tents, everything. RVs, trailers, tents. Yeah, sweet. You can't go wrong with that. I mean, you can live right here in this little piece of land, walk over and party, and then come back and crash again. We're with Cindy from Monashi Music Festival as well. Thanks for joining us as well, Cindy. We want to talk a little bit about uh, Mamas for Mamas and what you guys are doing with the uh, charity at the music festival. Well, we're giving away, we're actually fundraising, we're going to be giving them a dollar from every drink. And Mamas for Mamas is a really great cause. They have 30 locations across Canada, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that no mama is left behind. So besides the drink tickets, there's an opportunity on your website where people can offer a donation as well when they're buying your tickets? Yes. yes. That's awesome. And what is the website again? It is monashimusicfestival.com. Monashimusicfestival.com. Guys, get your tickets now. You don't want to miss this. If you live in the Okanagan, especially, you have to support. Make sure you check it out right now. One more thing, David, what's he doing for us? Well, we're gonna be giving away some tickets, Peter. So uh, make sure, if you're watching right now on Shaw or YouTube, please, please make sure you head over to our social media and make sure you are either following us or like us on Facebook because we will be posting all the details on how you can win two weekend passes. Two weekend passes. Two weekend Let's passes. We're giving two weekend passes to Monashi Music Festival away. So stay tuned, find out how you can win. Hey everyone, don't forget, we've got beer. Thanks to Martin Brewing in Vernon, you can come in town and get some from them, six pack, whatever you'd like, and talk to your local liquor store, they'll bring them in. Guess what? If you'd like coffee, we've got coffee mugs, shirts, hoodies, everything else. Check out our website, hellokanagan.com for more info. There's so many things to see and do in Sycamore throughout the year and we just gave you a little sample. Some of our favorite things that we didn't have time for though is some of these cool restaurants that are in town. There's Joe Schmuck's Amazing Breakfast, there's Moose Mulligan's where you can basically be in the channel and watch the boats come and go while you're eating. We have a friend from Caliente Hot Sauce that owns a place here. What's the it called? La Cantinita, yeah, from Caliente Hot Sauce there. That one, uh, an OG on Hello Okanagan. Yeah. That's always a pleasure. Totally, and he's got a great patio. Main Street, there's so much to see and do and shop down there. They got a great beach. And then if you like golfing, there's a couple of great golf courses. There's Eagle River and then there's Mara Hills, the brand new Mara Hills. You know what I love about Mara Hills? Uh, easy golf course for you? No, it's hard, man. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hole actually that you tee off from up here and the hole is down here. But one of the cool parts is if you're on a boat, you can literally dock, call them and they'll come with a golf cart, pick you up and take you up golfing or for lunch or whatever you'd like. That VIP service. Definitely. And they got a great beach here in Sycamus. There's so many things to do and see guys. Make sure you check it out when you come into the Okanagan. It's the beginning of the Okanagan and Highway 97. Hello all you amazing Okanagan people. I am Saffron Quist. And I'm Chelsea Baker and this is your Okanagan Update. Where can we play slow pitch all day and then listen to live music while drinking beer all night? Fantastic slow pitch tournament and music festival is happening June 30th to July 3rd. There will be over a hundred teams playing in the tournament. This is a 19 plus event. We're gonna see Aaron Pritchett, Darby Mills Project, Ben Click and the Sean Lightfoot Band. But you have to show up on Thursday night because there's gonna be a special giveaway just for those there on Thursday. And you can enter to win 
win a houseboat tour with one of your friends. For the whole weekend. Ooh, even better. Kelowna Comic Con is entering its fifth year. Come out on August 20th and August 21st. This year, they're going to be including all different fandoms, including comics, sci-fi, anime, and video games. So I figured I'm going to be um, Princess Leia and you can be Darth Vader. Or I'll be like Wonder Woman and you can be like Batman. Courtesy of Chibi's anime, children 12 and under are free. We love the IPE! The Armstrong IPE is happening from August 31st to September 4th this year. They are celebrating their 121st fair after taking a two year break. So that's huge. They've been around forever. Did you know that they've got 80 acres of grounds? It is big. The IPE is big. I like the horses. I like the rodeo. The live music. Chickens. You rides. Love, you love the chickens? Yeah. Food vendors. A parade. Pigs. Sheep. Horses. Cows. Artisan exhibits. Rodeo girls. There'll be some rodeo girls. Cowboys. There'll be some cowboys. Ooh. The Canadian Wildlife Museum is doing a series of giveaways over the summer months. Each prize is an entry for two people, including two bird books and a $25 gift certificate for their gift shop. Go to dotheokanagan.com to enter to win one of five prizes. And that's it for your Okanagan update. Back to the episode. Sick of Moose Houseboats, this is Hello Okanagan. We want to thank you for an amazing weekend on the houseboats and on the lake. And thank you for watching the show.